she's going to give us um, a talk about tremors treatment with focused ultrasounds. It's a live presentation. It's uh, good afternoon to everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Professor. Elisa okay, good Francesco. afternoon. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. Thank you to Professor Fazi and to all the panelists. I will talk about tremor treatment with focus ultrasound talamotomy on the beam uh, in, with my presentation. So, uh, I, okay. Emergifus can uh, produce a coagulative necrosis of a target tissue obtained with multiple focus ultrasound sonication under MR guidance checked by thermographic maps, as you see on uh, your screen. There is no physical incision, and this is something very interesting for um, treatment on the skull base, on the head. Lexel helmet, as you see in uh, the picture, should be, um, should be uh, put on the skull of the uh, patient for targeting uh, purposes and then should connect with the ultrasound generation with interface of cold water behind this uh, uh, silicon membrane. As you see, the patient will be awake because we need to check the clinical progression during the procedure. Every time we do a sonication to check if there are any complications, if the patient is still awake in a good uh, uh, well-being and uh, how the tremor is, uh, um, is progressing. The results are immediate and the long-term follow-up uh, can be done with, with MRI. I don't want to take any more time on about, about the history of the use of ultrasound uh, in uh, this uh, field, in the medical field. Uh, what we know is that for uh, head and uh, head procedure, um, the interest of MR IFUS uh, um, is more and more progressing uh, since the end of 1990. Now, uh, the pathogenetic mechanism underlying tremor is largely unknown. The dysfunction seems to be in the cerebellar inhibitory output, output with characteristic deposit of levy body in the locus ceruleus. Uh, also, hyperactivity of the lower olive uh, nucleus suggests a possible source of rhythmic discharge that can generate tremor. As you see in this scheme, there are different kinds of tremor, essential, Parkinson, cerebellar, drug-induced, and uh, psychogenic. So it is very important when we want to treat our patient by means of MRGFUS to exact make the diagnosis of the type of tremor and to exclude the, the other uh, possible etiologies, such as, in particular, psychogenic and toxic four. Also, the quantification of tremor in terms of motor disturbance and disability is very important. And here uh, is reported one of the scale, the most used scale, that is the tetras, for speaking, feeding, drinking, hygiene, and dressing uh, abilities, and uh, a scheme, a uh, spiral, and some line that can check the writing on our patient. The target of the tremor is the medial intermediate ventral nucleus, the beam, that is part of the lateral ventral nuclei of the thalamus. Uh, there are other effective targets in essential and Parkinsonian tremor uh, that also appear to be caudal portion of the certain zone and the subthalamic nucleus, while GPI, the inner pale globe, is considered a target of dystonia. Here you see in the MR, axial, coronal, and sagittal, where is the beam? And this is an enlarged view. The essential tremor, uh, the first randomized trial for focused ultrasound thalamotomy in essential tremor was done in 2016. So from there, 
a lot of uh, uh, a lot of work was done. Uh, the talamotomy technique are uh, different, and we know that the most historical one is the radio frequency lesioning that was done since 50 years ago. Then deep brain, brain stimulation and gamma knife. Uh, there are differences and uh, uh, similarities between the technique. So what we have here is that we do an ablation with irreversible effect. We don't use general anesthesia because we need that our patient is awake to uh, check the progression of uh, our uh, treatment uh, live. It is not invasive, and this is something very important. It doesn't use, obviously, radiation. There is the possibility of bilateral procedure. I correct here because right now it's possible to do bilaterally. Uh, there is no device implantation, and we see immediate results. So, uh, also, uh, obviously, there are risks that with uh, experience, the risks are less and less, and uh, uh, we can check by MR exactly the spot sonication and uh, to correct any possible um, difficulty and any possible uh, uh, mistake. So uh, pre-MRI is very important because we have to check if ischemic injuries, gliotic scars, vascular malformation or other associated injury that can uh, produce overheat, poorly transmit ultrasound, increase susceptibility to seizure are not present in the brain of our patient. Here you see that the ultrasound has to progress through the skull base. And obviously we know that reflection, refraction, absorption, and eating can deflect uh, the um, ultrasound. And uh, sometimes we have to refocus our ultrasound uh, based on the compaction of the skull base. As you see here, the skull density region, that is the ratio between the lowest and highest density measured on CT scan along the entire skull, crossed by ultrasound can be low, so uh, low compaction, or very high, so high compaction. And this high SDR, uh, like around uh, uh, 0, 6, 70, uh, is the most convenient for our procedure. Classification and paranasal sinuses can deflect our uh, ray, our focus ultrasound, so we have to see and to exclude from our uh, plan. So here what we have, we have uh, uh, fusion between pre-MRI and CT scan. We did uh, the no-pass region here in red, paranasal sinus and calcification. We did the uh, targeting here in the VIM, in axial, coronal, and sagittal view. And we uh, measure the S uh, SDR. Here, uh, down below on your right, you will see the SDR here is 0, 066. So the skull base is go uh, has a good compaction and uh, a lot of element, a lot of ultrasound can be, uh, have a good progression through the brain and through the skull of this patient. So here uh, is uh, uh, a, a three example of different SDR, 032, uh, low compaction, but still possible. Uh, 0 0.53, good compaction. 0 0.67 is uh, uh, the perfect situation. Uh, so what we do? Uh, we can neuromodulate with low intensity pulse uh, foos. We can uh, open the uh, blood brain barrier, as Dr. Stanziano, after myself, will uh, talk about with intense pulse uh, foos. And we can do thermal ablation with high intensity continuous IFOS. So from the um, high foos generation, the, there is the um, need to uh, focalize the, uh, through the target. And this is what 
happen in uh, our patient. The patient is positioned, is, is connected to the Lexel uh, uh, helmet is uh, on place, is connected everything to the uh, uh, helmet of the US inside of the magnet and uh, all the um, ultrasound should be targeted on our beam. There are special algorithms that the Insight Tech uh, uh, software um, use to refocus the, based on uh, calcification and SDR. We can check our uh, procedure, as you see here, align, verify, treat low, treat high. So at the beginning, we check that with the thermographic maps, the position of our sonication. We check the temperature that we reach. Here, you see 70 degrees the maximum. We already uh, uh, are on treat eye, so we are doing uh, a coagulative necrosis, and we have also an acoustic control of our procedure. This is another example. Obviously, the temperature should be uh, will be uh, a, a specific uh, patient parameter, so every patient can reach the same temperature with different curve of. Uh, of temperature, sonication, and different energy, power, and duration. Every time we sonicate our, our target, we go and we check our patient and we uh, ask him also to write um, at the interval between sonication to check if there is, such as in this case, uh, progression and an improvement on writing here and on uh, uh, the spiral and the drawing. Um, here you see uh, we can also, as you see here, this is the setting of our room to big screen. This is the MR, the true MR. And this is the screen of Insight Tech for sonication, the two system are fused, are, uh, are uh, talking uh, uh, each other. Here in the middle is, uh, uh, is uh, the telecamera to check the patient inside uh, behind the screen. Uh, we can do at the end or between sonication and MR just to check what are we doing at, uh, uh, and if the lesion is already visible. Generally, after uh, 10, 20 minutes from the first sonication, it is possible to see already the typical round shape, target shape lesion of the, um, of the sonication inside of the VIM, like in this case. So what about our experience? We treat uh, um, essential tremor and tremor in general uh, since 2019. We did 133 patient, mostly uh, essential tremor, unilateral, but we did also a repeated treatment uh, in the same side, in the same patient, and a controlateral one staged in six patients. Uh, the clinical outcome are um, in baseline six, six months and 12 months, very good, as you see in uh, performance uh, in the treated uh, um, side, essential tremor at baseline, we have uh, uh, very from baseline to six months to 12 months. We have a very good uh, improvement in the daily activity uh, scale uh, and severity of tremor evaluated with uh, the tetra scale um, for tremor. Uh, as you see also, we have a very long uh, follow-up, uh, 12 months, that uh, give us a very good uh, uh, outcome results. Here, another way to see the same result in the uh, daily life activity. Here, as you see, in uh, essential tremor in blue and uh, dystonic tremor in red, a very good improvement that keep uh, also um, improving in 12 months. The same here in the performance uh, uh, measured by tetras scale. 
And uh, we recently presented an abstract at the 8th International Symposium on Focus Ultrasound in Bethesda, um, uh, putting all together the Italian group for Focus Ultrasound in Neuroscience, the result of all the sites in Italy that does tremor and uh, uh, ultrasound procedure for the brain. So a total of 510 treatment in Italy to date, uh, 291 on essential tremor and 181 in uh, Parkinson disease. In this uh, series, the relapse were 6.7, almost 7%. Only 4% for uh, uh, essential tremor. Aborted or failed procedure due generally for technical uh, uh, cases or patients that cannot keep up with the procedure uh, were 3.5%. Without any severe permanent adverse event reported, only mild or moderate adverse event with no restriction in daily life activity in 16% of the cases. With six retreatment, uh, the retreatment of our uh, institute, as uh, we already saw. So just to uh, give you an idea, this lady was not able to, to put uh, water from one side to the other side after the procedure, only the right hand was treated, so the left beam was uh, uh, treated. As you see, she was able to do uh, her performance much, much better. And here the writing uh, show that the uh, reading uh, is uh, readable and uh, uh, she uh, was uh, really much better. The post-operative MRI also is very interesting to check how uh, the lesion progressed. This is a typical uh, lesion, target lesion with the center, with the neo um, coagulative necrosis, with some edema, uh, penumbra kind, and uh, edema uh, around. So the three typical pattern. The evaluation of the edema can be done with a, a T2 volumetric uh, MR, uh, SVI, DVI, T1 with uh, contrast uh, medium. Generally, there is a, a small uh, point of contrast inside of the lesion, a sub kind of contrast uh, around the lesion. Uh, and this is uh, at the uh, follow-up, uh, as you see here, uh, the lesion is uh, uh, bigger. After uh, 12 months, uh, almost not visible anymore. And this is uh, the result at 12 months. Uh, so the treatment with the Margifus in the neurofield require a complex multidisciplinary team that coordinates all aspects relating to the management of the patient and his pathology. And in our experience, we believe with the high resolution MR sequences uh, pre and do during the procedure allow for advanced pre post treatment evaluation with improvement of pre operative planning and post operative long term follow up. Uh, I like to acknowledge all the team that uh, all together make possible all these uh, uh, kind of results. That is a multidisciplinary team that include neurologists, neurosurgeons, neuroradiologists, and physicists, technicians, and nurses. The group of Insight Tech, specifically Julia Frazzetta and Paul Wright, were our mentor, and obviously GE. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, thanks again for inviting uh, to this interesting meeting. My presentation is Thank finished. you, Professor Elisa, for this very interesting talk. And to our last speech is Dr. Mario Stanziano, will give us uh, widening the scope of HIFO uh, indications in the brain. Hi. Uh, 